Uh, John speaking, how may I help you? Hi, John, this is Amanda at Arkansas CPS. Oh, how you doing, Amanda? Good, how are you? I'm doing very good, just catching up on some work for, uh, over the COVID season, I got backtracked. Uh, how you doing? Uh, I'm good, I'm actually on maternity leave for the next month. But, so you're teleworking uh, too, okay. Yeah, but I wanted to call you about your request, uh, about your FOIA request, uh -huh. and give you some information about our system. Is so it a, okay? Go ahead. It, it seems to me like you're wanting the the names of all the certified law enforcement officers in Arkansas. Yeah, I right? can I can I can explain what what we're doing a little better. Maybe maybe I'll, I'll put some clarity on what I need. So we've had okay, so. We're, yeah we're studying. I'm a data analyst. I'm studying big data. So uh, I have a files of all 150,000 sworn officers in America, give or take. Um, and 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 I, and I don't need the agency they work with. Sometimes people send me that. Uh, it makes it easier. Um, and sometimes they say they don't want to disclose that, and I get it either way. But what we look at uh, is uh, the, the phenomenon of impersonating an officer. So we had a large amount of reports of, uh, of, of impersonating officer complaints or people who have been stopped by people they didn't believe were officers um, and made, made reports to, and then there was arrests made and convictions. But various different complaints, there's several different subtypes of complaints that yeah. come in. Um, but that, that being said is uh, the, we were interested in being able to, to verify that someone is certified to, to do a job uh, when 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 we have um, you know when taxpayers are paying for the uh, the, uh, the the uh, academies to train them to certify them the boards and commissions uh, to decertify right. things like that we have all these things these uh, fail safes in place uh, to hire qualified people and then we have an increase of uh, complaints about uh, impersonating an officer and I've I'll be honest with you some states don't know who's certified in their state or not that that. I'm not going to tell you which states those are right now, but I, I will release it in a report eventually. But anyway, that that's what we're studying right now. So I know I probably have a really good idea of who doesn't know. But I'll tell you, yeah. so the issue with me sending all of their names in a bulk like that is I, under Arkansas FOIA, I cannot, I'm prohibited by law from releasing any information about undercover officers. Oh, I understood 100%. Now, I don't know, and again, I think we're moving to the same topic, is that I don't want to know, nor do I know, uh, who is on that list. And there was a few states that have that have sent me their data that had similar um, legislation for that. And they they knew, so they redacted it. I just got, got black blackened, you know, there were redactions. Um, there was one state. There was one state that had all their undercovers, I guess, in one attribute, so they're able to sort and filter and just remove them. Um, and that, I guess, that would have been easier than redacting. Uh, but that, yeah, one state actually sent me redactions. But yeah, I don't. I don't want well, any information on that. I can't. I can't pull it like that. So when I pull a list out of our system of all of our officers, yeah, I can. I, I can't filter out the people that are undercover. So what I would have to do... Then how would I know that? So I just want to make sure we're on the same page. If you wouldn't know who... Well, uh, you, you do know who's undercover. You have the data. It's not that you have a list I of... Uh, okay. Gotcha. Well, and so the issue is that whenever I pull them, it's going to pull every single officer in the state. And right. I'll have to go in and look up every single person individually to be able to know if I have to redact them or not. And it's a huge amount of officers. No, no, I, no. I, I don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, I, I understand what you're saying. So, but make make sure I'm clear on this because, in, in all reality, the, the request I'm making is a pretty standard kind of request, and and, and, and I think it's it's the it, any any layman could see how it benefits society to be able to know who's a certified notary public or a certified contractor or a certified officer. So, now um, that being said, so so the 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 request itself falls purely on what would be freedom of information in any society, whether it be America or any other country. So the the the, the qualifiers for you to do the work, it sounds like an issue with your database. Now I'm not sure. Now I, I so I, I I'm gonna be I, I guess a question I have, and you know as a data analyst I ask a lot of questions. When you pull your the records, 
do they have does it have to say who is undercover because obviously i'm not asking for any pictures of anybody or where their assignment is or anything like that but if their assignment was undercover uh, would, would your data uh, I'm automatically include those officers? Is what you're kind of saying? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. When I when I pull all the officers, it's going to pull all of them. There's no way for me to filter out only those officers that are undercover, so they don't show up on the list. And that database that will actually identify which of those officers is undercover. Like, there's no way to stop that uh, identifier, that attribute from being, being no, available? If it, if it said they were undercover, then it would be easier for me to redact, but it doesn't. But the problem is, it doesn't matter if it says they're undercover. I can't release their name at all, period. Whether it, whether you know they're undercover or not, I can't even release their name. So if I, Amanda Yarbrough, was an undercover officer, I my name could not show up on a list anywhere that says I'm an officer in the state. Okay, so, so yeah, again, because uh, what, what we have to figure out is what, because it's gonna prevent us from getting getting the, the what was what you're saying, and I I, I I I think I'm reading you right, is that the amount of executive administration work and in, in the in the position that Arkansas is currently in, that w that would be involved in releasing the names of law enforcement officers that interact with the public on a day-to-day -day basis and may or may not be performing within the laws, we, you know, as we know that that that, that there are examples of misconduct and malfeasance within the police forces unfortunately uh so yeah yeah so yeah. In, in order for, for so it's, yeah. it's not surprising that people people engage in misconduct every day and well, it's not that i can't well so it, and that's what i'm saying i'm gonna have to search in every name individually when i go into our database Right, but that that's that's an excessive administration expense, and I and that's that's what I'm getting. And again, you 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 can't help what your administration expense is, so I'm not blaming this on you. I'm trying to follow it and document it properly. So, from what I'm okay. understanding, is that in the current shape that Arkansas is in, for the the public to have a release of. The, the 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 list of officers, the roster of officers that uh, are that could be violating the law, interacting with the public, and, and understand the qualifiers because basic basic standards follows legislation of what an officer should be trained in. So we we have open legislation that says here's what the peace officer standards are in this state in Arkansas, and here and then basic adheres to those standards, so we can follow the 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 legislative mentality all the way down to the executive branch in that in that the that capacity but then what, what, what I, I think I understand is that once those officers are certified if one commits misconduct um, uh, say they violates a constitutional right I'm not going to give a hypothetical right now because there's a lot of different ones it could be um, or sure. uh, commits a, 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 an offense of integrity violation like lying on a police report uh, planting drugs uh, things like that um, then we we can't we we need to as p as 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 the citizens know then that this officer was certified in this manner under this legislation to either absolutely. know better or and not know better. So when we're when so we're yeah, go ahead go ahead. And when you FOIA, when you FOIA that usually what we do is I say I ask people give give me the list of names that you're that you're looking for so like it would be an ongoing relationship which i'm completely fine with oh I, i'm okay with that too but the list of names I, i'll tell you here where the problem of this is is it's all reactive so with, with Virginia, I, let me. I'm gonna use Virginia as an example because they're the most recent example where we had a little bit of a victorious situation. Virginia in 2020 implemented a law. You you might be familiar with all this. It's not right if you're. Am I being redundant by telling you what Virginia did in 2020? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, so Virginia introduced a, a, a law that basically extended decertification uh, offenses to more more along the line of the, Bla the Brady list. Instead of it being only for uh, committing crimes or um, lying on a police report, or lying uh, to an, an internal affairs investigation, which were the three offenses they were decertifying for up until 2020, uh, they included more uh, integrity offense offenses into their list. I won't say it's as comprehensive as the, the Brady lists, uh, but it is um, it is expanded quite a bit. And since that, uh, it took about a year and a half for them to start implementing some discipline and do DDC certifications. So from 99 until until uh, uh, 2020, 2020, when it was started, um, 
there were only 81 decertifications in Virginia, but from March of 2021 till August of 2022, there was 103, um, which you know, which is a, a substantial increase, and the vast majority of them were for these newly uh, added integrity violations. So why I bring Virginia up is that in order for uh, uh, the data analysts for us to pull the data and be able to put the, the, the dashboards and the pie charts together for the visualizations and to see that this is a, an issue, um, we needed to know a larger data set than the names of specific officers. So, um, it, and I do, I, I, I guess I'm, I'm trying to, I get your position too, you're in a conundrum. So I guess the best thing for me to do is that if you can point me to the point me to the legislation that says that you can't put because I, I guess there's a, might be an interpretation problem because I, I I wouldn't know who's undercover or who's not and if they're working on undercover capacity they're likely not using their real name and there's no pictures being delivered um, I there's a lot of other fail safes in, 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 in place there that that in order to inject that into a data set. Uh, that would be public data and then say well now the public data set is is difficult to uh, retrieve and in order to retrieve that data set it would take a large amount of administration time which has got to come out of your pocket and th that, that that that's a very vicarious way of of thwarting uh, public records if you could understand what I'm saying well so and and I can I mean all of the undercover stuff is in the Arkansas FOIA law so there's an exception and I can't I can't cite you to it right this second because I don't have it in front of me. Right. But under Arkansas FOIA, it specifically lists an exception that the names of undercover officers in the in the uh, Office of Minimum Standards, which is us. Right. It is not their names are not releasable. So and that's under Arkansas FOIA. And, and, and but yeah, and I guess I'm, I guess and this is not your job, but I get confused on why the data set of the uh, the public officers would be somehow manipulated to where it's it's it's, it's difficult I, I i guess i'm not i'm a data analyst right so you can imagine I, I work with spreadsheets all the time in sql databases and i'm seeing an attributes i'm just seeing attributes and, and observations and they've been i've been, been building databases like that for oh, i mean i've been doing it for almost 15 years and they've been you know been before i got here so I, I guess I'm trying to follow with what you're saying, and I and I definitely believe the words you're saying because I feel like you have integrity. But I'm trying to follow on why this undercover attribute would be so difficult to sort and filter. Because it doesn't pull in our system when I pull, you know, when I go in and I say, okay, I want to run a report right. of every Arkansas, every certified officer in the state of Arkansas. So I want to pull all auxiliary all part-time, all full-time, right. all specialized, everybody. When I pull those, it's going to give me their department. It's going to get. It's going to pull on an Excel spreadsheet. Right. But what it's not going to pull is whether or not they're undercover. It doesn't pull that out of our system on onto this Excel spreadsheet. It so this, the, that that that, so that attribute and observations are not on that 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 data set. They're in a separate data set. And that's the and that's the only way to pull it to know when if, if an officer is undercover. So typically, when I get a FOIA request. Like I said, let's say they want to FOIA Amanda Yarbrough, mm -hmm. you know, law enforcement officer in Arkansas. Right. I would go to that record individually because they have an individual record in our office. And then just cross reference. And before them. I, I would have to, say, I would have to look and see, are they noted as an undercover officer? If they are, then I won't release their information. If they're not, then I'll release their record, no problem. So is but the database? I a, oh, is it? I, I, I didn't even interrupt, but it would help for clarif clarif clarification. The database for your undercover officers, does it also export into an Excel file? No, it's the same data. It's the same system. Well, I guess what I, what, I, what I'm asking is, um, so can't can't, and I'm not saying I I don't know what you're again. I, I'm I'm not trying to make any um, assumptions on on your credentials or uh, your skill sets or anything like that because obviously we all do our positions with the skill sets that were provided so I'm, I'm not being critical I'm just trying to understand and so uh, the, the database I, I mean, I'm visualizing that you're getting an Excel spreadsheet of a list of all the officers and there's attributes and observations on that spreadsheet 
So you have attributes, and none of those attributes on that spreadsheet say undercover or assignment. I guess the assignment wouldn't say undercover, or I guess however you you aggregate your data there. And then in it order. Undercover on the Excel spreadsheet, no. Right. So what I would have to do then, what it's going to pull on the Excel spreadsheet is their name, their department, their date of birth, their social security number. It's going to pull all of all of the fields. It only pulls certain fields. Okay. Right? In in, so, your, in your in your way of, of, of handling this, I, I'm just I guess I'm getting clarity would be to go through the say that's twenty six thousand officers in Arkansas, right? We'll, we'll, we'll say there's 1,400 pages, Excel spreadsheet pages, which is, that, that, that's, that's probably about right. Um, so, right. And that, then, so what I would do is when, that, when I pull that list of names, I would go back into the system, have that list of names on one, on one screen, right. and go back into the exact same system and individually look up every one of those officers to know if they're undercover. But there would not be 26,000 people on the undercover officers data sheet. So, no, what, what, yeah, so what I'm, what I'm trying to follow is why, why someone would go through 26,000 names if there's 340 undercover officers, let's say, or, 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 or even, even 1,200. Uh, why would we apply, uh, say, I'm going to take the administrative time to go through 26,000 names and see if they correspond with the undercover database rather than taking the undercover database and seeing and just eliminating the names of the 26,000 that exist within because the undercover I, database? Because I can't pull an undercover, a full comprehensive undercover list and just compare the two lists. Oh, you That's can't. The, the, it does, your, data does, your database does not allow you to do that. No, it won't pull just an undercover list where I could just pull, like, let's say there's 300 people undercover, and I can just pull that list of 300 and go pull those people's names off. I can't do that. Oh, well, this this and definitely I, has to do with the data. Okay, so this is this is not your fault at all. I knew, I knew it wasn't your fault. I, I, I just had to figure out. So this this has a lot to do with the, the, the software, the, the company that bid on the software and the capabilities of the software. What was the name? Of, are you using Cadiz or Benchmark or something like that? We use a CADIS, and, and I've never been able to get a CADIS to tell me why. It will not tell me why. It will not pull what my undercovers are. Oh, well, oh, oh no, awesome. If you use a CADIS, that's really good, because I've been working with CADIS for a very, very long time. Benchmark is a newer a newer system that is I'm not as familiar yeah, with. Um, Mark, yeah, yeah, but I mean, Benchmark is a nice system. I just you gotta get familiar with it. Um, the, uh, the but the Acadis database, yeah, there those now. I don't, I, I'm not with you. Obviously, I'm a, I'm a civilian, so I'm not gonna do this on the phone and, and tell you how to do that. But what I'll do is um, it, 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 with Acadis, with we should easily you should easily be able to sort and filter and, and, the, and redact. A data set with another data set, and if you can't, if that if the availability doesn't exist, then we then we need to reach out to the Cadiz to see why it doesn't. Because ultimately, I, I wouldn't want you to spend the amount of administrative hours it would take to read. You, you, you get what I'm saying? Is I I understand what you're saying right. is that I wouldn't want you to do but, that. And nor I'll tell you, I've reached out to a Cadiz, but the way we have it flagged in our system, the way the way we've done it in a Cadiz is flagged them a certain way. And I cannot pull those, according to a cadence, because I've asked this several times, I cannot pull the flag out of just the flag people out of the system based on the flag that they have. I can't do it. You can't, you can't uh, sort and filter by the flag? No, that's what I've been told. Is I okay. cannot, because I've deployed like this before, and I've had to explain the same way. Right. It's you, not that I don't want to release, I just, I don't want to go through, you know, 30,000 officers. I get you. No, I 100% understand. I wouldn't. And that's why I'm trying to like trying to figure out why you, why you, you know, when I first got the email, I was like, why would she have to? Like, I, I couldn't, I couldn't fathom uh, why the data set would, would not have an easier way to exempt, um, especially if it's yeah. written in legislation. So you have the legislation, obviously, is what you're quoting, and I, that's exactly what I would expect everything to follow. So you start with the legislation saying we need this, these capabilities, and then bids are made to a company. And I, I'll tell you the truth, Acadis, Acadis is, runs most of most of the database stuff that I work with is Acadis, and I I know that right. other. 20 something other states that use a CADIS have sent back these records. So I, I, I'm, I, I was assumed I would get some kind of similar, um, similar, uh, 
response from some of them. You know, if this was a, uh, was a, uh, uh, they may be more different because we've done it as a flag right. for our, for our, for our staff purposes. Right. I know there's a, there's a place that you can, I think that you can pull it as a data set. Right. Um, I think there is, but ours isn't listed that way. Ours is done as a flag instead, and I've been told I can't pull the flag. Okay, so yeah, I get now, that because I originally when we go ahead when we when we started this data set that we we're working on here, we started organizing our at our, our things by department. Uh, like our law enforcement de department or agency, right? And then we would list the officers that are employed by the agency or employers, what we'll say. And and what we noticed was as the stakeholders, uh, the data scientists, uh, the person I report to, uh, started seeing that by the time they were analyzing the data and doing the visualizations, um, it was it was obsolete. You know, there was so many uh, yeah, it's transfers. Not the data move every day you, yeah. you got it so we had to go and then and that's what turned us to, to go into the state itself that's actually what it what led me to you was that that way of doing it was uh, first off it was burdensome for all the political subdivisions to do that as, 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 anyway you know some of them don't have the capabilities or the or data clerks that, that or to do that they just didn't know what they're and I'm not expecting them to that's why I said I wouldn't expect you to have any more skill sets than you have that, that satisfies your employer so I'm happy with that um, but it sounds like there's a, a de there was a departmental policy to flag the use flags as the category uh, categoriz categorization of the undercovers and as far as you are aware a, uh, a CADA's database the way it's flagged uh, will not allow you to sort and filter um, that data to the to the uh, to the the larger roster we'll say the the the, the, the full roster of, of, of and that that becomes problem, problematic it sounds like in multiple FOIA requests because you said you, you dealt with this before so what we need to do is yeah, take I mean, yeah I mean I them all the time like hey we want a list of all the, the names of all the officers in the state I've gotten I mean I've probably had you know seven or eight this year and, right. and they come from in, you know and that it's been the same thing is to my to my knowledge what I've been told is by um by a cadence is because we we flagged it that way instead of so you might have to change the flag, but that would be a department policy. Is that my understanding? Now, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just want to make sure I'm clear clear on this. And when you say we flagged it that way, is that a personal decision or was that like a, par a departmental policy? It's not a policy, but that's the way it was easier for easiest for our staff because the flag shows up at the top of the record. Okay. And so when we, whenever I go on to Amanda Yarbrough's file uh, onto my profile with the state post, right. Uh, at the very top, I'm going to see a flag that says Amanda's undercover. Right. So yeah. it's very identifiable. So, so there's no mistakes made. It's, 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 exactly. It, it, yeah. So got it. No mistakes. That's exactly why we did it because I, we had a couple of instances where an undercover uh, information got released out, and it shouldn't have been. Right. And it's because. That, completely overlooked the other the other entry right and so now we don't keep up with that entry now we flag them very specifically so that it flags at the top of their file hey basically they're undercover do not under any circumstances release their information okay but now i'm told because we decided to do that and we did that as a as a safeguard really we sure. did it as a we do not want to release their information. We can't, by law, release their information. Right, and, I, and for, for good so, reason. For I mean, I, obviously. Yeah. yeah. So it, in order to avoid that, we said, okay, this is the way we're going to do this now. And it's not a policy. It's just a, we use the system in a different way. Right. I understood. I'm just I'm just wondering. So yeah, because obviously, so you got we all we all have to be more efficient as, as, as the years go by in everything we do. I mean, obviously, our our every job, my career, your career, we're always trying to be more efficient. And I think what I'm understanding is that you've gotten seven or eight requests this year alone for for data that I, I think we can all agree should be available to the public for multiple reasons. Um, but it's it's very difficult for you to administer. In, in, in the way right. that it's been done. I, the, the real question is, so, someone's probably going to have to bite the bullet on the hours to, re, to recategorize, to reorganize it to where uh, these FOIA requests can be fulfilled in a, in, in a, uh, a, a more uh, uh, economic, I guess is the best word, that, or manner, because 
uh, it, it would be it's burdensome for the, the taxpayer or the, the public to uh, pay a high administration cost. It's burdensome for you to have to do the labor that you're des describing. Um, and and it, it, is, it, is, it is overly burdensome for the public to just say, oh, we don't need those records. We don't need that data. Because the reality is we do need that data. So uh, being in that so position, go ahead. And what I've done in the past, and what I've done with these other requests, is I've said, okay, look, so I have a list that I can pull of people that are decertified in the state. Right. And a lot of times that's what they're really looking for, is they want to know if the, you know, if the, if this person has been decertified or not. So that's an easy list for me to pull. I could pull it in five minutes. Yeah, so let me tell you the ones we're seeing. Let me ask you if you could pull it. This will be in yours. So do you have refresher courses when somebody's not been uh, employed by an agency for so many years, like two or three years, right? Like perishable I, skills? It would be on their record, but I don't... I'm not aware of a way in a CADIS to pull it that shows, well, tell me people that haven't been employed and you know. Well, well, no, no, I'm trying to describe something so you can see where I'm coming from. I'm, what, you, what you're offering, which is a good offer, don't get me wrong, at service level, I, I don't think that's bad to, to know who's decertified. But what we have found is our uh, officers that are employed with an agency, and I can give you one scenario, like you're on maternity leave right now. Um, we, we had multiple officers. I don't know. I'm not going to say any numbers because I don't know the right number. And I don't want to. I'm not, I'm not that type of that person to give you wrong numbers. But uh, multiple okay. officers that had left because they had a baby. They worked for an agency for a number of years. They left and they had a child. They stayed. Uh, they just decided not to do law enforcement work for a, a few years while the child was an infant. And they got back into law enforcement after the child was a toddler. Um, the, the, the officers went you sometimes back to the agency they were already employed with. On several instances, it was to an adjoining or adjacent agency or where they moved to. Um, and uh, they, they, they did not take their refresher, uh, their perishable skills uh, refresher courses. Uh, and in one case, I can think of, but I don't know if this, this is more than isolated yet, but one case had been over five years in a state that after five years, their basic certification was put on hold until they re did basic again. Now, I, I don't know 100% what Arkansas's law is, all that's what our legal department does, um, but I assume that they, that, that they would have some type of similar uh, requirements or prerequisites. Ours is progressive, so we have it three years, good for, I believe, three years, and then it goes to three years. And then after three years, you have to take a refresher course. If right. you're between three and seven, you, I believe you have to take the refresher course. And then seven to ten, ours expires automatically at ten years. So okay. If, if, you've got, if you've been out ten years, you have to go back to the academy. Period. So let's say somebody um, works at, and I give you a scenario, somebody works at ABC Law Department, uh, Police Department. That, that right. he, he works there for he goes to basic he gets his basic certification he's working there for a couple years he has a child he, he then says I'm gonna take uh, paternity leave and then he extends that into where he doesn't go back to work until the child goes to to, to, to school to kindergarten because he wants to stay home with a child while the child's still home and then right. he, he goes back to the agency it's been now the child's five years old so it's been four and a half years past the paternity leave um, he obviously now has to take some kind of refresher courses in order to keep that certification to do law enforcement. So the, right. the, the, in Arkansas, it sounds like at three years, it's the same situation as perishable skills that you have to refresh on. Now, would you have in now your data set when you have decertification, that list of decertified officers, would it include that scenario at all? No. So what it would include is people that have actually been decertified for misconduct by the, by the governing board. Right. Misconduct. Or, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, we have. We actually have one of the most extensive decertification lists, or a source, some of the most expansive decertification authority in the country. I, I, I um, agree. With, I, Arkansas is Arkansas is good. I don't want to cut you off. Keep going. I'm sorry. No, we can decertify for for a code of ethics violation, and a lot of states, most states, cannot. So I mean, we can we can just for you know, I, I mean, really, almost anything. So basically, you have the break, the, like what Virginia just implemented. You almost you, you pretty much have that already implemented. Where if there's if someone and shows a lack of honor or integrity, that you know that, that you can decertify for that reason. Absolutely, and it's been that way for years. And, no, and that, that's um, so awesome. Our list is going to like that. 
So, but it's not going to include the person who expires because they're not decertified. They're just no longer certified. Okay. And I know that's a weird thing. It, 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 it is, it is weird, but when you say no longer certified, and, and pardon me if I'm, and, and I don't want to be too frank with you, the way you get, you feel like I'm, because I'm not being offensive in any way, but if they're not, they don't hold a certain, so, a notary, we'll take a notary public who also works for the state. Um, a notary public that has requirements as well. If you don't meet those requirements, your your stamp is no good. Your, 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 your notary is, is, is not currently valid. You, uh, and you have to, to, to accomplish the, the prerequisites to, to be able to do the position. So is that the same right. way with uh, Arkansas or can they be employed? It's the, no, it's the same way. It's the same way in the sense that your credentials, your law enforcement credentials are not valid right. until you complete the, the requirement to be, re to receive your certification again. But it's not C certified, it's just not certified. Not certified. certified. It's, it's, a, it's a judicial, it's not judicial, but the governing board. It's an administrative decision. But you're a, you're a civilian at the time. Office. Is what I'm trying to get. You're a civilian. You would be a civilian in that case, right? Absolutely. Right. You so a civilian, a civilian. If, if a civilian were driving around in a publicly paid cruiser, right, wearing a, a uniform, performing arrests and possible use of force. Um, and then taking people and booking them into a judicial center to go through a judicial process where a lot, where they may or may not be convicted of a crime and their liberty may or may not be taken away from them um, and the taxpayers are footing the bill for that whole thing it would it would be it would be perfectly reasonable for the taxpayers to say uh, how how many uh, officers are are not certified we won't call them decertified are not certified because I'll be honest with you I I've seen enough reports now to, to su suggest that it's a problem nationwide and I'm not saying that I'm holding anybody accountable for that because I don't think that people have quite looked and examined it and I, I'm an analyst so I'm, I may be right. one of the early ones to examine this situation um, so I, I don't hold people go ahead I think I think you're absolutely right I think that that probably does happen I'm not gonna say it does it does um, I absolutely believe you that it does um, and as a matter of fact, we have decertified someone for that. I can't remember his name. I wouldn't be able to tell you his name, but it, I, honestly. But I, it's several years. I've been here five years. Right. So I can tell you that we had a guy we decertified through the administrative process. Because that's the thing. is The decertification is the administrative due process right. that the office has to receive. Right. That's why I don't call the other decertification. It's okay, got it. they haven't been to administrative due process. So they haven't been so, through the, yeah, the due okay. process rights. Got it. So these that are decertified on this list have. And I know I had a scenario, it's probably been several years ago, where I had a guy who had either forged or he had forged some, uh, one of the requirements to be an officer and he was essentially acting outside of the law. He was, he, he was not, he was not, he was not eligible to be law enforcement. Right. So he was decertified for ever any future eligibility for law enforcement. He cannot work in law enforcement in Arkansas, period. So what I would say is, if that's the kind of thing that's happening, one, I think that's a post issue. And when I say post, I, I, I assume you know what I mean. Yeah, the peace um, officer standing tra training is what I'm thinking you're talking about, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, we're the, so we're the Arkansas Post. I'm the attorney for the Arkansas Post. Right. So to me, that's a post issue. To me, what I would say is, when we have a agencies by law, by state law in Arkansas, are required to report new hires to us, okay. and we actually have audit authority within our office to make sure that that is happening, and we do go audit regularly. We have we have two staff people that that are certified law enforcement that that is their main job. And they're auditing. Let me make sure I understand the word audit in your in your scenario. They're they're auditing the political subdivisions. Yes, they're okay. auditing sheriff's offices, municipalities, anybody that has a law enforcement agency, we have authority to audit, including Understood. the Arkansas State. So, we what we would what we do is when we they're required agencies, all agencies, state police down to smallest municipality, is required by law to report any time to us to the post any time they hire a law enforcement officer. They're required to. And so one of our audit, one of the one of the pieces of our audit when we go to an agency is to make sure that their roster, the people that they have working there, matches what we have. If it doesn't, those people are removed. 
So there is prolactin. It sounds like it, it, it sounds like in that what you're, what you're describing when there's an agent that audits the roster. If that person, but but here I guess we're going right back to the same thing. Would they know if someone was not certified, not decertified, but just not certified? Absolutely, our agents would because they would go in and they would look and see. Do we have a record of this person? That's going to be the first thing. So let's say that. Um, let's just let's use a big one so it's easier to recognize. Little Rock Police Department hires a man okay. to go to work. Okay. But Little Rock Police Department doesn't report to the post that Amanda works there. So when our agents at the post go and audit Little Rock Police Department and Little Rock says, Yeah, Amanda, you know, Amanda's one of our officers, she's not and she's gonna be on the payroll because we can audit payroll records. Right. right. So when we go in and we say, Let me see all the payroll for all the officers they're going to show Amanda on the payroll. And we're going to go, our agents are going to go into the system and say, well, Amanda doesn't have a record with us. So if she's not a law enforcement officer, she is removed from service immediately okay. until, she's, until she's reported and has completed the appropriate training. Now, the other scenario would be that she is reported, right? So Little Rock Police Department reported that Amanda does work for them, but it's been a year and a half and Amanda's done no training. Well, they're also going to get re Amanda's going to get removed from service again because Amanda doesn't meet minimum standards. Okay, so your 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 data there when your officers go in that even even if they have a refresher they need to do, they would know that this person needs needs need, has some things they need to do to be become in compliant with certification. That's absolutely. That, I've seen, I've seen a training history report from a cadence, right? You work with them all, so yeah. So you know what a training history report looks like. I do. So we track their employment throughout their career. So I know that Amanda has worked at Arkansas State Police, Little Rock Police Department, Washington County Sheriff's Office. I know that just by going to Amanda's record. Right. Right. So I and I know they on that on that same training history. I go and look at the whole training and say, "Hey, look, Amanda had a five-year, seven-year, six-year gap between working at Little Rock and going to Washington County." Well, Amanda's been working for Washington County and she never took the refresher. Amanda's removed from service because she hasn't met the requirement. Now, once she meets the requirement and she takes the refresher course, she can go back. That's right. fine. But she has no law enforcement authority until she does that. That makes sense. So, yeah, that, that's what we're looking for is people who not necessarily, there's nothing wrong with Amanda working there as a person or, you know, she hasn't committed any any, any offense. It's, a, it's an offense of omission, I guess you'd say, is that there's something exactly. you need to do. And she might not even realize that at the time. So there's there's, there's definitely no, like, we're not, we're not looking at an accountability issue when it comes to that. We're just looking at, you know, and honestly, there are, there are bigger pictures on why we need to know these things because, you know, uh, for various reasons. But, but mainly because what I described is that, you know, Know, technically is impersonating an officer I mean if you're a civilian it, but it, it more so than Absolutely. than any other offense I could possibly imagine in that category because <laughs> usually a, a person in the officer just requires like vinyls on your car and a uniform that that, that that looks like it has insignias of an officer and performing duties that would normally be reserved for an officer and that's what we see and and those people are are a lot of times apprehended and and, and, uh, and convicted or at least prosecuted for those crimes whereas well, the, so here's the thing even if they're not prosecuted that's why I say I absolutely would like an ongoing relationship between us because mm -hmm. we do get tips like that. We do get, we take civilian, uh, uh, just regular citizen, I shouldn't say civilian, citizen information. Hey, this person is, you know, working in my area. Are they a law enforcement officer? And I can look up and say, yes, they are. Uh, here's their record. Or no, they're not. And if the answer is no, they're not, then the very first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to tell one of our agents, I need you to go to XYZ Town and find this person and take their take them out of service. Right. right. Oh, okay. So that that yeah, that's something I would love to be involved with because I mean I'm already doing yeah. that and I and I, I do it for nonprofit. So I'm, I mean I'm just an, I'm an energy data analyst. I, I I made good money when I was working with the DOD, but then uh, they stopped paying us <laughs> during a shutdown. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I went to the private field. I kind of got a little little resentful, uh, I guess for for a number of years uh, since 2013. And then uh, you know over the years I've I've learned that. The resent resentment doesn't improve anything. It doesn't help society. Um, so you know, when we look at data, we always got to look at 
the ethics involved in it and in the only ethical way to deal with this um uh, I'd say, I don't want to call it anti-cop sentiment. It's just a disconnect between society right now and law enforcement. The only way to deal with it is attack it head on and, and find out what the roots are. And I think we, that, that, that the best way to get to that is through data. I just don't see anecdotal right. example. That qualitative data itself is not giving us the answers we need. Um, so, yeah. So I would ask then, what I would say then is, is or ask, I guess, is... You know, if you have information like that in our state, um, then I would ask to be the first person to know. Awesome. Because that's something that we're going to deal with. And not only are we going to deal with it, we, we do go ahead and put those people up for decertification. So I say decertification, and decertification, I had an attorney argue with me several years ago, so I actually have the law change. Um, I had an attorney argue with me that decertification implies that the person is certified. So you cannot decertify. So in your scenario, yeah. this person never went to has never been certified. Well, you can't decertify them. Right. So, which I think is a ridiculous argument. So what I did, uh, what we did as a post, I say I, what we did as a post is uh, several years ago, I believe it was in 19, we went to the legislature and said, here's the argument that's been made to us. We think it's ridiculous, and here's what we're asking for. The legislature granted it. So what I have now is the authority to decertify someone or remove permanently their ability to ever act in law enforcement. Depending on circumstances. So whether they actually, whether they actually uh, were ever certified in the sense that they went to training and did all of that is wholly irrelevant okay. to us. If I have somebody impersonating a police officer and they never went to the training, I can still decertify them through state law because I can remove their ability to ever act as a law enforcement. So they couldn't go later on, and, and, and since they, they've, yeah, they've already, you, 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 you didn't do the proper process. We're not going to then allow you to go and do the process because you're acting outside authority. Exactly. Makes perfect sense. That's exactly right. I mean, yeah, so. Yeah, that's exactly right. So we did that several years ago because I had, a, I had an attorney argue that, um, well, by the time we got to the hearing, he had gone over 10 years, so his training had left. And he would have had to go back to the academy had he not been decertified. Well, his argument was, well, you can't decertify him because he's not certified because his training lapsed. <laughs> That's not true. So you, they were trying to get me on a technicality. And so I don't deal in technicality. That's just politics. So, so you know, so and he lost, by the way. He lost that uh, argument. That's good. And That's good. Was decertified. But the, I, the point I'm making is, that we fix that so that I cannot have anyone come and try to argue that technicality to me again. That, that's awesome. And, you know, it sounds like you. You, you know, I, I'm very uh, um, happy that they have you know such a uh, an exemplary example of someone who deals with this. I mean, you you obviously know what you're, you're talking about, and I I definitely I'll send you over. Um, uh, yeah, I want to send you a modified request, but. I mean, really, my data set can't be done without being able to look at the big data. So, uh, since the big data is being hindered by these um, these uh, undercover examples, I think that with when it comes to Arkansas on my side, my, my first thing is I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get a hold of a guy I know at Cadis and see if there is a way um, because I can't think of how to change. I, you know, and I wouldn't even offer that. From, from the back of my mind anyway to a, to a law enforcement uh, 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 agency. So I, I would want to have someone from a CADIS offer that information. But um, let's see if so we can... Here's what yeah, go ahead. To, to modify it, here's what I would tell you what I've done previously. I've, I've given the decertification list, which is easy to pull, and I can pull that in like, so just a few minutes. Um, but at the same time, I can pull just a number and tell you, hey... There are, without giving you names, without giving you anything else, I can say there are, you know, 32,147 certified officers in the state of Arkansas. And I can, I can tell you that. And then what I would say is from there, um, that at least gives you something, at least a number of how many officers we're working with here. Okay. Um, and then give you a decertification list to tell you who who is decertified. We've been decertifying sounds like a lot longer than who did you give me earlier? Uh, what state? Uh, Virginia. Oh, Virginia. 
Virginia. Yeah, we've been decertifying longer than that. Okay, um, awesome. So yeah, that, and that 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 that's good. I'll send you that modification, and that's good for right now. Um, obviously, like as we get our reports in, um, the uh, the we, we you know it's it's nice to be able to cross reference in house. I mean, I I won't won't kid you, but having having direct contact with you, and I, and I know you have an infant there, so I'm not gonna keep you much longer. But having direct contact with you, I have a vested interest in knowing what what you're learning. Okay. I absolutely want to do that. And so what I what I would ask is, if you hear something like that, and I and you say, hey, we got this report out of Arkansas, can I FOIA this person? Absolutely. Got it. And I will tell you, yes, this person is certified, or no, this person is not. Where are you hearing they work from? Because I'll deal with that right now. Awesome. Uh, that that I think that is a, that is a good. A good start that allow us to make some progress and strides in Arkansas on on locating uh, the the situation and being and being able to visualize it better. But again, I you know I I've, I've raised three kids, so I know that while you you are awesome and professional, you you definitely have a diaper change by now or something. So absolutely, yeah. So. I am a, my my kid is whacked himself in the door with the in the nose with the refrigerator since we've been on the phone. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you I'll let you get back to that. And thank you so much for your time, Amanda. And I hope you have a beautiful day now. Hey, look, don't even worry about sending an update. What I'll do, um, I'm doing, and I'll tell you, I'll ask you on the front end. Uh -huh. I'm doing a weekly call in, even on while I'm on maternity leave. I'm doing a weekly call in with uh, with one of our staff members there at the office. Okay. And I'm responding. I'm giving her instruction basically on how to pull information. Like when I get, because I'm, I mean, FOIA doesn't stop, right? Whether right. I'm on maternity leave. Or not. <laughs> exactly. Um, oh. So what she's doing is pulling all the data, and then I'm reviewing it uh, before it goes out. But we're doing those calls on Wednesday. Okay. So would it be okay if I send her the data to pull the total number of officers and the decertification list? Oh, absolutely. I'm okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, absolutely. I'm 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 all for whatever makes it convenient for you to be a good mama, and uh, we 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 help get this data together and try to understand the things. I I, I was very what, what I explained to you is exactly what our my current um, data set is is about. Is the I guess you're saying uncertified, not decertified, but uncertified officers. So yeah, I, I appreciate all, all the help I can get, and I and I'll get I'll I'll do the same and reciprocate that with you. Absolutely, I appreciate that, and we'll get those numbers to you, and we'll get you the decertification list, at least get you something to start with. Mm -hmm. um, and also, when we send you that on Wednesday, what I'll do is I'll send you a link to our website as well that has our entire uh, set of rules on it. Okay. That our decertification rule is, is on our website, so you can see exactly what we decertified. And for. that's awesome. That's, that's exactly what we want to see. Awesome. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't like yeah that's easy. We'll send you the link to that. And we'll send you the decertification list and just the total number. Now, keep in mind when I tell you total number, that's going to be um, specialized. Yeah, time. you know, 26, 27 to thirty thousand people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you're not. So when you get it, you're saying, "My God, Arkansas is a small state. How in the world do they have, you know, yeah. thirty thousand, whatever it is?" Well, those aren't all full time because we do have part time. So I can try to break them out if you would like. Um, I can probably. Uh, it's not really one. necessary because I mean, honestly, everything that we're our, I've gotten so far from our stakeholders has been involved in uh, real time inter interactions with uh, with with law enforcement. So you know, in the world of cell phone cameras, um, we're, we're processing more qualitative data than we ever have. So, okay. uh, the, and the, like I said, that is, and I absolutely want to know if you have somebody that's calling you and saying, "I just got pulled over by an officer in Arkansas." Um, and I, I, I'm freaked out. I don't think that they're actually an officer. There's mm -hmm. something weird about it. Then I would say, send me an email. I'm usually, when I'm not on maternity leave, I usually respond. I have three days, but I usually respond to FOIA within a couple of hours. In that, that I definitely will do. I, I think we advise. Well, I know we advise people that when that situation happens to call the local local police department nine one one and and go from yeah. there and get down record. Right now. It, and the, the best place to do in, in Arkansas, the best thing to do is to tell them to call the post, call the local, uh, call the local agency, but follow that up with a call to the post because we will tell them immediately if that person is law enforcement, and then that tells us, hey, we have somebody out here running around like law enforcement, and they're not. 
according to our records, and we need to go deal with that. That's that, that's great advice. I will, I will definitely update that to our network. I won't publish that because I don't want you to get a bunch of phone calls. But I will update that to oh. our, our personal network and send out in the newsletter. And uh, and yeah, again, uh, Amanda, you, you've been you've been amazing to talk to, uh, and, and I'm sure we'll have many more conversations over the years. Absolutely, call me anytime. Like I said, this is something we're we're absolutely very vested in in Arkansas. We've dealt with it, um, and we'll continue to deal with it. If it's happening, then I want to know. I, I hear you, and that's all. That's all we're trying to accomplish is a better society. So thank you so much, Amanda, and and uh, you have a beautiful uh, maternity leave, and uh, and take care of that beautiful baby. Well, thank you very much. It's great to talk to you, and we'll get that to you on Wednesday. All right, Godspeed now.